Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. And Luke, the sixth chapter, and the 31st verse says, And as ye would that men should do to you, do ye also to them likewise. The golden rule. That's simple. You can be seated. You know, nowadays, in this day and age, the golden rule has a different connotation. You know, it's he who has the gold makes all the rules. But that's not, what, that's not what Jesus meant. If you've got a Bible, both of these passages are in red letter. That means Jesus said those. You know, and so there's a lot more to this than what meets the eye. As you look at it, you know, it says, As ye would that men should do unto you, so do ye also to them. There's no room for any confusion there. There's no confusion. It says, if you want somebody to do something to you, you need to do it to somebody else. Now, like Chris was saying, you know, those people out there are just like us. Just like us has a lot of the same experience, a lot of the same background. We all work. We went to school. We did a lot of things. I guarantee you when they were a teenager, they didn't imagine themselves being in the situation they're in right now. I, I guarantee you that was not their goal in life was to be down and out, broken hearted, broken spirit. I guarantee you that's the way it is. But remember, it's broad. It says all things, whatever you would have them do to you. See, and that goes not just for us, but for our kids. Whatever. Whatever you would have somebody do to your children, you ought to be doing for somebody else's children. However you would like them to speak to your children, you know, it's clear. However you would like them to teach your children, to minister to your children, to encourage your children, to uplift your children. That's what we should be doing. And this peanut butter and jelly is a way for us to reach out and show the love. What I say in Sunday school, God wants us really to just do two things, love him and love people. Love him and love people. Now, don't get me wrong. We can't condone sin. We can't wrap our, our arms around sin. But Paul made it clear in Romans. He said, nothing can separate us from the love of God. There is nothing that we can do can separate us from the love of God. We can separate ourselves from a relationship with God by our actions thing. But God doesn't hate the sinner. God hates the sin. And we should love the sinner just as much as God does. Love God, love his people. That's what we need to do, and that's what part of this is all about. That's the reason we come together. And I encourage you, if you have the opportunity, if you've got the time, you know, go out there on you know, East Avenue, go out there on Heaton Street. I grew up just two blocks from there. I know what they're talking about. I drive by sometimes now and can't imagine that I used to, grow, uh, used to live on that block, used to run around, play stickball in the different yards, play hide and seek and all that thing and some of those people half the people that I grew up with down there are dead or in prison they never saw their 50th birthday they never got to live past that you know they either OD'd uh, got shot got stabbed you know died in prison went to prison for some other thing because they were trying to get another hit or another fix See, we've got to love one another. We've got to encourage one another. And it's love that draws people in. It's not us telling them all the good stuff that heaven's got to offer. You know, we could say that. They've heard that when they were in Sunday school. They heard that when they were in vacation Bible school. They heard that on TV and the radio. We've got to show them that God loves them by the way we love them. And like uh, Chris said, church hurt does a lot of damage. But I talk to people all the time. Remember, that wasn't God that hurt you. That was a person that hurt you. That was a person that maybe had malicious intent. Maybe didn't have any malicious intent, but were just too ignorant to know any better. But they hurt you. That wasn't God. See, a lot of people hold things against God and hold things against the church because, you know, people made a, made a mistake. But guess what? When we come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, we should be out there telling people, God loves you. God loves you. I love you. It doesn't matter what your background was. It doesn't matter what your past was. It doesn't matter what your history was. I love you. So the golden rule is, I want to treat other people the way I want to be treated. And I need to do that because that's what Jesus commanded me to do. See, it's reasonable. It's practical to do that. It just makes sense. We say, oh, the golden rule. We grew up, oh, the golden rule. My mom sang a song that one of her brother-in-laws wrote a thousand years ago. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. I still remember my grandma having a plate in the kitchen, and you don't ever eat off that plate. Okay, that stayed on the wall. That was art. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Why? It makes sense. 
it just makes sense, but somewhere along the way, we lost, we lost that part of our life. We got so wrapped up in our own troubles, we got so wrapped up in our trials, we got so wrapped up in our own lives that we didn't want to take a moment to look out and see these people that were once just like us. Guess what? Jesus died for them just like he died for us. Jesus died for them just like that. So, you know, it, it, this covers all the action and inaction. Well, I didn't do anything wrong to them, but did you do anything good to them? See, a lot of times, you know, sin isn't just the things we do. Sin is the things we don't do. See, that word sin came from a Greek word meaning miss the mark. See, God has set a mark for us in this Bible. He's given us a target that we're supposed to hit. And however, however far we miss that target is what sin is. If he tells you to go out there and feed and clothe and give water, if he tells you to love one another and you're not hitting that mark, yeah, you may not have done anything wrong, but you didn't do anything right. See, and that's what it's talking about. Do those things. See, I can't judge. You know, in that seventh chapter of Matthew, he said, judge not lest you be judged. We're not here to judge people. We're here to lift one another up. We're here to encourage. We're here to love. We're here to build them up, support one another, exhort, come together, encourage one another, tell you, you can make it. You can make it. It doesn't matter what kind of problem you've got in your life. It doesn't matter how big the financial problem. It doesn't matter how much, how, what kind of problems you have with your children. Nothing is bad enough that you can't go to God and turn it over to God. So whatever the case may be, if you're out there on the streets and you're loving these people, like they said, they may not come to the house of God, but if you continue to be consistent... You've got to be consistent. You've got to be somebody that they can learn to trust, they said. They learn to trust them. Why? Because they see them week in and week out and week in and week out still carrying that flag, still carrying that banner of Jesus Christ. I know that Joey and Mickey are going to be here. They probably look forward to Tuesday. They probably look forward to Saturday to have that connection because these people want nothing more than to belong. That's all we all want. We want to belong. And because of that, you know, but, you know, we've got to make sure that we're applying this word the way Jesus wants us to apply this word. We can't pick out our little pet verses and throw, the ra throw away the rest. We've got to use the whole thing. And when we get there, these people, these people know good and well their life's off track. There's not a single one of them that are in their right mind that don't realize that they are where they shouldn't be. But we got to pray that, you know, like David said in the Psalms, that he picks their feet up out of that miry clay. What's that miry clay? That clay is sticky. That clay is sticky. It sticks to you. Those habits stick to you. Those old ways of life stick to you. It's hard to pick them up, and we can't pick them up. Jesus has got to pick them up and set their feet on the solid rock. He's got to be the one. All we can do is love them and tell them about Jesus. Tell them that there's a hope in Jesus Christ. Tell them that there's a better way in Jesus Christ, and he will pick them up out of that miry clay. He'll pick them up out of that sticky stuff. We can help them. We can extend the love of Jesus Christ. We can extend the ministry of Jesus Christ. But we can only do so much. Jesus has to do the rest. Jesus has to do the rest. See, it's difficult. Why? Because people are reactive. We, we react. We, we don't like to take action. We don't like to be the one first in the pool. We like to make sure the pool's warm enough. Y'all laugh, but I do that every time I go to a pool. <laughs> I'm like, I don't just jump in. We, yeah. First of all, I want to know how deep it is. <laughs> but we, we're reactive people. We want to react. We, we don't want to be the one out there. But somebody has already blazed the tr trail. I can't imagine how hard it would have been. I, you know, listening to Joey and Mickey's story, Lord, like, I want you to start a food pantry. I've been like, Lord, I need to see some ID. <laughs> I just can't imagine what that's like to be the one that starts something like that. I can't imagine what that'd be like. But see, you know, a lot of times it goes against the grain of society. I know there's people that have probably told them, you've lost your mind. You'll never be able to help them. You'll never do any good. I can't believe you're just wasting your money. You've got a, da a daughter to send to college. How are you going to do all this? I bet you there's a hundred different people, or even the devil jumped up on their shoulders and said, Psh, how in the world are you going to do this? But if the Lord puts it on your heart, and like, like Chris said, I dare you to show me in here where he said that none of us should be doing this. I dare you. I dare you. There are things that, you know, 
that we all have an opportunity to do when the door is open. And we don't know if that door is going to open on the street. We don't know if it's going to open in the aisle of Kroger's. We don't know if it's going to open at the workplace. We don't know where it's open. But there's an appointed time for everybody for us to step into that gap and tell them about Jesus Christ. To tell them that there's a heaven to get to and that there's a hell to miss. Tell them that there's a hope. Each and every one of us had that appointed time. But if we don't think that we're the one, well, I'm not a preacher. I'm not an evangelist. I'm not a pastor. I'm not th- we can make a hundred different excuses and try to justify ourselves. But the fact of the matter is, we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. We have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. And without the grace of Jesus Christ, without the blood of Jesus Christ, without coming to an altar of repentance and going, Lord, I'm sorry for what I've done. Forgive me. Forgive me. I want to do what's right. I I don't want my life to live this way anymore. And whether they come into the doors of this church, whether they come into the doors of another church, whether they never come into the doors, as long as they give their heart to Jesus Christ, as long as they ask for forgiveness of their sin, His grace is sufficient. But, but too many times, you know, we let the devil give us excuses, and we're all too quick to buy into them. We let the devil give us excuses and say, well, you're not smart enough. You're not educated enough. You don't have enough money. You don't have enough time. He'll give you a laundry list of excuses, and you could pick your favorite one if you want. You could pick, or you could pick several of them. But the fact of the matter is, he has called us. To go out there, it says, hey, it's necessary that I go away or the comforter won't come. And when he came back, before he left the second time, he said, listen, I want you to go into all the world. Not just into Hamilton, not just into Cincinnati. I want you to go into all the world. That's your world. You may never go to South Africa. You may never, never go to Australia or China. But whatever your world is, tell them about Jesus. And once they receive Jesus, you baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. See, our job is to tell the world, our world. I'm not going to be able, I, I got news for you. I ain't pretty enough and ain't got enough money to be on broadcast TV going over all the world to tell them about Jesus. You can smile if you want, but you love me and you know I ain't pretty enough. <sighs> but that's the, way, that's the way it is. We, all, we may not all get to tell the whole world, but we can tell our world. There may be 20 people that listen to you before they'll listen to anybody else. There may be only five people that listen to you more than they'll listen to anybody else. Tell those five people about Jesus. Tell those five people about Jesus. Why? Because it's necessary for us as a child of God. It's beneficial, not just for them, but for you. The more we testify, we are made overcomers by the word of our testimony. The more we tell people about Jesus, the more it strengthens our walk with Jesus. The more we tell people about his faithfulness, the more it strengthens our faith in him. Because there's going to be times in our life that we're going to be down. Anybody in here ever been down? Anybody in here ever been depressed? Anybody in here ever wonder which way is up? But when you start telling somebody about Jesus, when you start bragging on Jesus, when you start telling people that he is faithful, when you start telling people that he is worthy, then pretty soon that depression gets a little bit less. Pretty soon that down and out gets a little bit less. Pretty soon those clouds that were so dark start breaking and you could start seeing a ray of hope in Jesus Christ. See, the more we tell people about Jesus, the more we are made overcomers. But a lot of times we think, oh, well, if only. Remember last week we talked, oh, if I only did this or if I only did that. Listen. I can't go back to yesterday. I can't go back to last week. I can't change any of that stuff. That's the reason Paul said, forget that stuff. Forget that stuff. I'm going to press on today. Today is a new day. I'm going to press towards the mark today. I'm going to press towards the mark today. I can't go back and change it. No matter how bad it was, I can't go back and change it. I can wish against wish against wish, and I'm sure a lot of these people that they minister to tell them all these stories about what they wish they hadn't done, but they can't go back and change them. Yesterday could have been the best day ever. I can't go back and relive it. I could tell stories. Oh, I can relish in that. Oh, and if you've got a few minutes, I'll tell you about the, t- the time I almost scored a touchdown in high school. Almost. <laughs> Ten yards short, I tripped over a yard line. 
I had a concussion. I don't remember any of it except for the film. And my coach that's still alive, he's 70-some years old. Every time I run into him, he says, you remember the time you tri-? Yes, I remember. Every time I see him. That's the story. Remember when you almost scored? Yes, I almost scored. That was a great day. But I can't go back and relive it. Oh, I can tell the story. And that's the way it is about Jesus. Our best days with Jesus, we should be sharing with people. We should be telling th- about Jesus. See, we should concentrate on action and not reaction. We can concentrate on what would, if you see a need, if you see a need, try to fill it. If you know that somebody needs something and it's within your power or within your abilities to help them with that, why not? Because if you had a need and somebody had the ability to help you, wouldn't you want them to help you? See, the reason I say all this is because this keeps us focused on being biblical. Love God, love his people. It's that simple. It's that simple. There's a lot of other things that we can go through today, but as we go through our life, as we go through the things in our life, as we're sitting here on Tuesday mornings or Saturday mornings and we're putting together that peanut butter and jelly and we're praying over that, Lord, let this touch somebody. Let somebody know that Jesus loves them. Let somebody know that you love them enough to send your only begotten son. See, the golden rule is all about I want to go to heaven and I want you to go to heaven with me. I want to go to heaven, and I want you to go to heaven with me. Nothing else in this life matters. Like I said the other night, if you had a 250-foot section of rope that represented our existence, only about an inch of that would be our life here on earth. Right here is where I was born. Right here is where I went to school. Right here is where I started working. Oh, here's where I retired. Oh, I'm going to enjoy this last eighth of an inch before he calls me home. And the rest of that rope is the rest of our existence. We worry about this one inch of that rope. We fret over this one inch of the rope, and we never worry about the rest of it. It's time for us to worry about the rest of it. Because that's what's going to last forever and ever, is this soul. Let's all stand. As my wife comes to the piano, I know this wasn't your traditional kind of Sunday morning message, but I thought it went in with what uh, Joey and Mickey, uh, Chris, and Betty shared with us this morning. And I really appreciate them coming out this morning and spending their time with us, uh, telling us about the ministry. And again, uh, you are invited. You can go out there and visit them out there on uh, 27, again, right across from the old Carter's Lumber, right before you get to the underpass if you're coming from Hamilton. Or if you want to go out there some Tuesday or Saturday, they'll give you their information. Uh, We've also got their phone number in the kitchen. But please, please, please know that our church needs to reach out to a lost and dying world. So as they bring a song, we're going to open the altar. Let's all come around and just have a good season of prayer as they begin to sing.